Hi, this is Gordon Ung with Maximum PC Magazine. I recently called up my cable company and cut off our cable. So at our house, like many other millions of Americans, we don't have cable, we don't have direct TV, and like most people, we basically watch streamed media. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity to take a look at Zotax Z-Box Blu-ray. This is basically a tiny PC that runs a dual D525 atoms, so dual uh, 1.8 gigahertz atoms. It uh, has two gigs of DDR2 RAM, and the cool thing, of course, it has a Blu-ray drive, a slot-fed Blu-ray drive right here. Well, I've actually looked at a lot of these sort of mini PCs lately, and most of them just sort of don't have optical drives, and most of them, if they do, they don't put Blu-ray drives in, so that's kind of nice. I will tell you, Adam is sort of a little borderline in being able to play Blu-ray uh, media. It's fine playing Blu-ray at 1080p, but sometimes, this is I, I have not fired this machine up yet, with older Adams, once you pull up the menu systems, it can, it can chug a little bit. This machine actually, despite it having, you know, uh, being miniature and having an Atom, it's actually got a lot of pretty cool features. It has this blue port, obviously USB 3, which is nice, and another USB port, and I believe I'm back. Actually, let's go over the other ones. We also have a card reader, the Blu-ray. On back, though, you also get optical SPDIF, HDMI, DVI, and a cool little eSATA USB combo slot. And, of course, gigabit, Ethernet, and yet another USB 3. So that's kind of cool because with USB 3 or eSATA, you could hook up your really big, fast external hard drive to this thing, and if you wanted to run media off of it at pretty high speeds, you could do it. Let's take a look at inside of the Zotac. I've taken a couple of screws out already to make this easier. Yeah. One thing you'll notice, it's metal. The top is plastic, and this is sort of a fingerprint magnet, but the base of it is metal which is nice, gives a little bit of quality. Inside, you'll see a single sewed in, which is nice. They could have populated with two one gig DIMMs to make it cheaper. This is nice because you can actually populate the other one with another two gig slot, uh, two gig uh, memory module. You get a, a 250 gig hard drive in this model, and it's gonna be tough to see. There's integrated 802.11n wireless, and down here is another mini PCI Express slot. I'm not really sure what you could put in there, uh, you could possibly put internal Bluetooth if you wanted to. I don't believe there's Bluetooth on this model. Uh, but it is there, which is nice. This, of course, has ION, uh, which uh, in the latest iteration of Atom is not uh, the chipset. It is now a discrete graphics component, which is kind of nice. You actually get pretty good graphics out of it. And um, uh, again, talking about streaming media, a lot of it's actually going to be based on Flash. In the older days, before uh, Flash 10.1 came out, it was actually very difficult to play high-def uh, streamed media with Atom because it was such an underpowered chip. But with 10.1, uh, Adobe added GPU acceleration. So actually, with the Ion 2, there should be plenty of horsepower to play even high-def Flash. Uh, some, not all codecs are going to work so great with it. I can tell you that I cannot play QuickTime in high def and any previous atoms that I've tried. I haven't tried in this machine again, so now I'm not passing any judgment, but it's quite possible you could have problems playing high def uh, QuickTime video. Uh, but you know, one of the one things you can do is then use the Windows uh, uh, media player, which I've found solves that problem. This machine is also kind of unique because uh, it's not a built up system. You don't get this, there's no Windows installed in here. You buy this box, you take it home, you uh, put in your Windows 7 disk or Linux or whatever you want to install, I suppose, and you install your OS. So it doesn't come with the OS, so you're sort of responsible for the upkeep of it. So uh, it also does have a Visa mount. If you wanted to, you could mount this on the back of a monitor or a TV that does have a Visa mount on it. So it's actually pretty slick. I'm looking forward to trying it at home. You know, I'm always looking for something that's smaller and quieter. And really, if you look at this with your on your home electronics console, nobody's even going to know that it's a PC sitting there. So that's kind of cool, although it does collect a lot of dust. Uh, one thing I do think it would have been nice is if they came with uh, some kind of remote capability, but I suppose they're going to count on you using a full keyboard for that. Anyway, this is pretty cool, and I really want to see it at home. And uh, this is Gordon Ung with Maximum PC Magazine.
checking out.